You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Hey guys, welcome to BCB. So I'm very excited this episode to be reviewing the uh, Atari Game Station Pro by my arcade. So as I said uh, previously on my channel, I found this at Target for $99. Uh, 99 and um, I purchased it even though I had a pre-order in for my arcade because that wasn't coming until uh, Halloween so uh, so I've had this thing for over a week now um, and in this episode I'm going to talk about my final impressions my review for the Atari Game Station Pro by my arcade there's some pluses and some minuses stay tuned Welcome back guys, BCB here, your host. As I said, this episode I'm going to be uh, taking a uh, full look for my review for the Atari Game Station Pro by My Arcade. Let's get started. This is going to be my full review for the Atari Game Station Pro. Um, if you guys want to see my unboxing of this, watch my latest episode of Unboxed. So my, my first impressions were, I was really taken aback by how awesome this device is, um, and I still feel that way. It's got a great selection here. We got different wallpapers, different music you can select, um, awesome games, of course. We have bonus games. And this episode, I'm going to be going over all of that, so uh, definitely stay tuned for that. So my friend Rick was here over the weekend, and we played this extensively um, here and there, and uh, we were really taken aback by... The design of the device, the layout is really nice. Um, of course, many of you know I got this at Target for $99. I had it on pre-order from my arcade, um, and that wasn't coming until um, Halloween. Um, so I decided to cancel my uh, pre-order since I bought it already. But just a cool game. Like here we have Cloud9, uh, which I've never played before. Kind of like Cloud Burst on the Atari 8-bit computers. Uh, really fun game. So, um, again, the aesthetics of the device is nice. I wish the actual control uh, joystick part of the controller was a little longer. I don't have the world's biggest hands, but um, my hands seem to dwarf the, uh, the uh, controller part of this. Um, the LED lights, of course, nice standout. Everyone's commented on how that looks very retro -y and cool, and I agree, too. Um, so this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at these games, the bonus games and the included Atari games spanning um, most of their consoles, um, and I can't wait to dig into this with you. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to take a look and see what this is all about. Alright guys, so let's dig into the Game Station Pro by My Arcade. I'm so excited about this. So I love when you hook it up. It's got that extra animation there. I have a hook up to HDMI. So uh, we have feature games here on the uh, front page here. 
all kinds of classics you're to choose from, plus bonus games and settings, which we'll get to. So let's go ahead and take a look at these feature games, guys. Um, there are some really cool games in here. Um, wasn't expecting. So uh, I'll show you everything here on the screen. Everything from 3D tic-tac-toe to whatever is at the end. <laughs> so uh, we have a nice mix of the games here under the all button. Uh, we've got some some arcades, some 2600, 7800, 5200. I'm glad everything is mostly represented here. Only thing missing is Jaguar and Lynx, really. So, and it'd be nice to see that. Um, but all kinds of cool games. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of uh, my favorite games here for you, maybe like a minute or so a piece. Um, so I want to give you a nice overview. So the 5200, we have Frisky Town and Meebzork, which were prototypes, which I've never played before. And here they are. So um, another cool reason to get this. We have some exclusive games here, I guess you'd say. Um, so my favorites, of course, Desert Falcon and Motor Psycho. I'll probably end up playing those. <laughs> Maybe even Asteroids. But uh, really cool. Here's the arcade tab. I love how it gives you an explanation of the game and and about and the controls that's really cool um so that was a uh never released game too asteroids deluxe uh, deluxe version of the classic atari game so um i might end up playing this because i like this particular version of asteroid so really neat so again i love how it's got the about the controls there what to hit to play the game that's very helpful since there are so many buttons on this thing so let's go ahead and uh play asteroids deluxe here just a little bit. Just want to show you what it looks like. Um, seems pretty true to the arcade uh, screen to me. Um, I do have this game on my Asteroids Countercade, uh, also by Arcade One Up, and uh, it does seem a little brighter on that. I don't know which one is more natural, um, but yeah, here it is. Um, cool game. I think I play another version of Asteroids in this too, maybe the 7800 version, uh, which is my favorite. But classic game, you can't go wrong here, of course. Um, you know, if you like these types of games, this is probably for you. Um, and it's really cool because the Game Station Pro is expandable too through the SD card slot. I'm not going to do that in this review, but um, I have started that process and that I included uh, that in my points for this review. So um, just FYI, I'll have that on a later show. Um, but yeah, cool game. So let's play some Avalanche. So this came out in 78, and this is actually the original Kaboom, basically. Activision took this formula and created that game, which is one of my favorites. Um, I wanted to show you, too, um, you could put overlays on the on the edges of the screen, and I have the TV overlay on, as you can see. Um, there are some other ones, or you can choose none at all. So Now, I also have this game, I believe, on my Asteroids Countercade by Arcade 1UP, and... Um, on that version, um, the spinner has kind of an issue, um, which is my problem with that cab. Um, that's fixed on the Atari 50 Home Deluxe cab, by the way. But here, um, you're, you're using this little knob on the uh, controller for the Game Station Pro. And I have to say, I'm, I'm gl I am glad it's there. I'm so glad it's there, don't get me wrong. Um, it just seems a little chintzy. I almost wish there was a, like the second player joystick was a, was a paddle or something. Because I feel like it, you know, you need more than a little finger touch to play this game really well so um, I didn't have any problems with it I'm just saying it is kind of small so you're sitting there using two fingers to turn this little knob and it's not the same as a you know paddle controller we're using your whole hand so it would be nice to have maybe another accessory out in the future or to have included it um, so I am including that in my score for this review uh, but avalanche is such a classic game if you've never played it um, please uh, do so I, I think it might be on the atari 50 compilation by digital eclipse i i'm pretty sure it is i, I feel like it's somewhere else in atari land right now so um but just a fun game i could play it forever and ever um i like to how the sound of the snow gets louder and louder that's so cool i love it so you can also save scores through the SD card slot. I'm not doing that here. But basically, you just insert it, and the instructions tell you how. So um, so let's go ahead and take a look at all these games here under the paddle games. These are all the paddle games they have on the system. And these, these especially Warlords, I feel, and Avalanche would greatly benefit from a separate joystick like a paddle so stunt cycle here i actually have this atari stunt cycle console and this is actually what that game is pretty much it's a little different here 
in the stunt cycle um, console from uh, pre-2600 days, um, you're riding a motorcycle. Here you're riding a car. But it's basically the same game. Um, and the uh, kind of emphasis here is on jumping over the... Uh, that's, that's supposed to be a car down there. And the stunt cycle console, those are little motorcycles. And then it's kind of like Evil Knievel inspired. But it's really cool to see this game here. This game has never been on the 2600, so um, this, from my understanding, was a prototype that wasn't released. And it seems like a cool game. I wonder why it wasn't released. I guess they just couldn't release everything for some reason or another. But um, And then the cars increase as you go on, as you see down there. So um, it's just such a cool game. I'm glad they included it here, for sure. It's a cool part of Atari history. Um, and I also play the arcade night driver later, which is cool because I never played that before. Uh, here we have steeplechase. This was my first game on my Sears home arcade. Whenever we got that in 1981 or something, we had steeplechase. So <clears throat> I'm going to play it here because, you know, again, it's my first Atari 2600 game I ever played. And then Space Raiders at, um, at the Sears. We ended up getting this because it was half off or something with the console. So, um, But yeah, we definitely got more games later. So I'm on the very bottom here, the Yellow Horse. Um, haven't played this game in forever, guys. Um, so uh, my gameplay is going to kind of suck. But I, I do get better as I go on. And I'm not sure if I show all of that here for, for time's sake. But just such a cool game um part of my personal atari history so i'm glad they included this here i, I noticed this was also <clears throat> pretty sure this is on the flashback 50 like the new flashback i think um again and this is somewhere else in atari land i'm sure um but just a fun game and then you can play second player as well i believe on this so my friend rick was over here this past weekend and we were playing a few of these games I did set up the second controller. Um, we, I think we played a two, yes, we played two player bowling, um, <laughs> which is one of our favorites. So, but we did test it out and it works great. It also gave me an option to save the score. So I'm um, to the SD card as well. Um, so uh, just such a cool game. I love this. It reminds me of being six, seven years old, sitting there playing this and getting frustrated. And I think this is one of the games I broke our CX-40 joystick against the wall because I got so frustrated as a little boy. <laughs> Thankfully, we got Frogger and Enduro and stuff later and uh, Video Olympics and all of that. Um, so, um, just some great memories for sure. Let me know what your very first Atari 2600 game was. I'd love to hear. So, moving on here, let's go back out to the galley. And we have different... Uh, arcade games here. Uh, here's Drag Race and Fire Truck, Dominoes, Crystal Castles. Um, we have sports games as well. Oops, I went over here to look at some other ones. So, uh, just showing you kind of what's under these, under the paddle games again, where we were earlier. Um, there's Steeplechase. Okay, going through, here's some multiplayer games, guys. Um, so these are all the two-player games, which is cool. Um, they have them all in one place. My only complaint is there's no favorites menu. I wish we could favorite games and access those a little quicker. Um, that's one of my major complaints about this system is there's no favorites. But uh, you do have a recent menu here, and so you can see what I've played recently. Some of these uh, for this review, some of them before. But a nice way to access games that you've played. So Pool Shark, I believe, was on Atari 50 as well. Now, on, on this game, you're basically... Um, this, this is based on the 1977 arcade game, Pool Shark. So on this one, you basically use the fire button um, and move the joystick around. And uh, this... Um, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> So basically, you're just knocking the white ball into the balls and trying to sink as many as you can in the shortest amount of time. I always thought this was a pretty neat game. I'm kind of surprised there wasn't a similar game like this on the 2600. Maybe an updated version would have been cool back in the day because this is kind of fun, just kind of knocking balls around. Um, it would be nice to be able to play like real pool. Um, this definitely is not real pool, um, <clears throat> but interesting and fun. <laughs> so fun. All right, Crystal Castles. This is the arcade version. 
Um, definitely an iconic game. It came out in 83. <clears throat> I remember being at Putt-Putt and there being lines out the door for this game. So, um, <clears throat> And rightly so. So um, here it's replicated very, very beautifully. Um, and uh, I, I could have played this all day. Now I do have this game on my Atari 50 um, Home Arcade, the deluxe cab I just reviewed from Arcade 1UP. I also have this, um, or I, I had this on my Centipede RK 1UP cab. That's what I traded the 54. However, it's still in my house right now because he's making room. Uh, and I, I think I have this somewhere else to maybe, gosh, I can't remember. I've got so many things going on in so many cabs, but I think I have it somewhere else too. Um, oh, it's on my Legends Ultimate because it's got different games on there from Atari as well. Um, and, I, and I've got some uh, ROMs and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, just a fun game. I mean, this is probably one of Atari's best arcade games, in my opinion. I just think it's so fun and delightful and good for the family and, you know, not gory and just a fun all-around game, right? Love me some Crystal Castles. So, Runaway is a game I've never played. This is 1982 arcade cabinet. It says it's a thrilling action game. Basically, you are, um, you can switch the tracks here and you're trying to... Uh, go back and forth and collect these different items here. There also um, is a woman tied to the tracks at one point, which is kind of interesting. Um, I never played this game before. See the woman tied up there? I think I run over her in a minute. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, never played this game before. It's so much fun. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's just, it's so fun. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm playing it right, but it's fun. And it's got that old-timey kind of font, right? Um, I can definitely see this being an arcade game somewhere that, you know, tucked back in the corner. This game, um, it has several elements. You change the tracks as well, or you can go backwards or forwards. And so there are different elements at play. Of course, here he comes. Uh, oops, I ran over the lady. <laughs> I don't think I got penalized for it either, look. <laughs> so bowling, of course, is a personal favorite of mine, 1978. My friend Rick and I played this uh, on this Game Station Pro this past weekend, it was fun. Uh, just an awesome game. Um, and it's one I'm always drawn to. Um, I think I played this on the Pocket Player by my arcade as well, and probably the Micro. <laughs> We had this whenever I was a kid, and yeah, I played this all the time. I know watching this is like watching paint dry, but it's just one of my favorite games. I love it. It's simple and fun. So moving on, let's go to the next game. So I'm gonna play a little Tempest here. This is the 1981 arcade version. And boy, is it fun. Now, uh, this, this is controlled by the joystick on the Game Station Pro. I almost wish it was a paddle game. Um, that would have been nice. Uh, but yeah, just really cool to have it here. Um, of course, I have this on my Tempest Atari Legacy arcade one-up cabinet, of course. I believe, uh, yes, it's also on my Atari 50 Home Deluxe cab, which I just reviewed. Check out that review, by the way, if you have not. I'm a huge Tempest fan, guys. I love Tempest 2000, and I love Tempest 3000, and all of the Tempest. I love them. Is there a 4000? Yes. <laughs> I like them all. Uh, but this is where it started, you know, and it's just such a fun game. Um, this game, I remember as a kid, there being lines out the door, just like Crystal Castles to play. And I could never play it in the arcade because it was so freaking busy. Now you, you see them in barcades and there's nobody playing them. And uh, But it's just such a cool game. Um, I feel like more people need to know about Tempest. More newer, more newer gamers for sure. But uh, just such a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, I could play this for hours and hours and hours. I think I play it here for like 30 more minutes. But of course I don't show it. Avoid them spikes. <laughs> So moving on, we have Liberator. This is 1982 uh, arcade game. The galaxy has been invaded by the evil Mal Malagian army. Can't read that. But uh, yeah, I definitely have this um, on my Arcade 50 
Home Deluxe Arcade 1-Up Cabinet as well as the Centipede one. Um, just a fun game. Um, a lot of fun. I'm always drawn to Liberator. Um, I, I believe this game either was not released or it was not widely released or was not liked. And I don't understand because it's it's kind of like reverse Asteroids in a way. I'm sorry. It's kind of like reverse Missile Command in a way. Um, you know, you are kind of shooting at the planet and protecting yourself from the missiles. Almost like there's, you know, almost like a missile command. You're shooting at these people, but uh, it's really fun. I really enjoy it. Um, it's it's definitely a full game. Basketball. This is 1979 sports game in the arcade. Now um, I'm not that great at sport at most sports games, especially these types. But I want to play at least one of these for you. There are several of these black and white games on here. There's like football. Um, I think there's soccer. There, there's other stuff, but really fun. Um, so I'm going to see if I can, I'm the guy with the black shirt on, um, I'm going to see if I can score something here. Probably not. Again, I suck at these games. Uh, but yeah, can you imagine this in RK back in the day and it being really popular? I just, I couldn't imagine it. <laughs> they move pretty fast, by the way. I mean, it's. <laughs> I just can't make a basket. I'm trying to block him, by the way. There is a little bit of strategy involved, guys. <laughs> Let's see if I can make one. Yes! Got it. So, Night Driver, this is the original 1976 arcade game. It's an exhilarating and challenging racing game, it says up there. Um, and this, now I never played this version. I've only played the 2600 version. In the arcade version, there was this car in the front, just as you see right here. Um, this is exactly the game, so. Um, really neat. I actually find this version easier. I think in the Atari 2600 version, it's it's not as forgiving as this seems. Good because see, I am slightly over the line a little bit, but it kind of takes into account you know wh where the wheels are. I think that's kind of cool. So this actually is easier for me to play, and it's kind of cool because it's the original. Again, I've never played this game before, not this version, and I suck at the 2600 version, which I just reviewed on Expresso, my Atari 2600 five-minute game review series. Check it out. But yeah, this is actually fun. I enjoy it. It's kind of cool to rediscover these games that, you know, I kind of, I don't dislike. Well, I dislike them. I don't hate them. But um, Night Driver is one of those games that is, I feel like needs the Atari Recharge treatment. It needs a little more going on. But um, of, the, of the two games, I prefer this one over the 2600 version. It's just more fun to me and easier to play. Okay, moving on here. Let's uh, see what else is out here. So here in the arcade, here's Red Baron. Now this is a 1981 game. It's an exciting and immersive flight combat game set during World War I. Uh, you take to the skies as a skilled fighter pilot, engaging in dogfights against enemy aircraft. So uh, this game, um, I first played this on Atari 50. I never played this before, and actually reminds me a lot of Battlezone, if you can see the similarities. Um, but yeah, this this is pretty amazing for the time, uh, for a vector uh, graphics game. Just a lot of fun. I'm glad they included it here. Um, I enjoy playing it on Atari 50 a lot, um, and it's just a really cool game. Um, I, I'm surprised this game isn't bigger and you know in the annals of atari's history i don't hear a lot about it really these days um i'm glad that atari 50 paid homage to it and i'm glad they are here too it's not exactly easy but um it's nice and it's you know for like i said for a vector game it's very cool so superbug from 1977 Drive your vehicle along the track in a race against time. Avoid oil pools, sand, and more. So um, this game reminds me a lot of Fire Truck, which I hate, which is an Atari 2600 game because there's a back and a front part to the long fire truck that's hard to maneuver. Um, the fact this is a small car makes this game very more enjoyable to me. Um, see, it's got some of the same graphics like Fire Truck does with the crunch. But this is fun, and this was an RK game back in the day. I remember hearing about it. I think it was popular. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. Um, again, I preferred this over the kind of sloppy fire truck mechanics of that game. Um, I think in fire truck, 
there were two people playing at the same time, one playing the back, one playing the front, something like that. Um, so this is much easier just to be a car, right? <laughs> Classic old game. All right, let's go back out there and take a look. Looking at the 7800 games, let's play some Desert Falcon. I love this game from 87. It was a later game. And basically, uh, you are out to confront the Pharaoh. Um, as you see here, you get three hieroglyphics. And here in a minute, I'm going to speed up a little bit because I do approach the, the Sphinx. But I don't want to show you everything in the middle because it took forever. But um, Well, not forever, but you know. Why do you need the extra footage if you don't need it, right? So, I love this game. It is one of my favorite Atari 7800 games. I'm so glad it's on this compilation. It's so much fun. Um, I love the 3D elements. I love the music. I love the gameplay. It's all good, guys. So here I am. As you can see, I got the Omni side. And you hit the R button whenever you are approaching the Sphinx. That's kind of what I'm waiting to see. And... Let's see. Whoops. So the good thing is after you die, you still have the Omni side. Um, I think you get that after collecting the hieroglyphics. So, so whenever you activate it, when you see the Sphinx at the end of the first level, you basically can kill him and move on. So as you see here, I'm advancing to the next level, and this is so neat. Um, again, Desert Falcon is one of my favorite 7800 games. It's also on the 2600. This version is much more enhanced um, just for every reason. It's such a great game, and I'm so glad it's here. There are many other 7800 games too, not as many as I would have liked, but um, you know, Scrapyard Dog is one they include everywhere, and I just can't stand the 7800 version of Scrapyard Dog. It's clunky. It's supposed to be their take on Mario Brothers, I guess, but, um, you know, platforming game. But it's actually better on the Atari Lynx. <laughs> the Atari Lynx handheld has a better version of that game. Uh, Desert Falcon, just such a cool game. I had this for my 8-bit computer as well for my XEGS. So fun. So back out in the gallery. Uh, let's see what we got. Motor Psycho is a favorite of mine, too. This was a late release in 1990. You're competing against other maniacs, it says. So this game has great graphics, as you can see uh, for the time on the 7800. This was competing against the NES, though, which had been out for five years. So, um, And this probably would have been like a subpar title on the NES compared to some of the games they had out So at this time, so in 1990. But I love this game. It's fun. Um, it never saw a wide release. It was a later game. Um, CIB copies garner over $100, $200 now on eBay. It's crazy. Um, but this is on the Atari VCS as a downloadable as well. Um, I believe it's also an Atari 50. Just a fun game. I love it. And you could jump up in the air. <laughs> so moving on here. Uh, let's see what else we got. So Food Fight, obviously a classic. Uh, let's look at the... 5200 games. Frisky Tom. This was a prototype where you control Tom the plumber and fix the water pipes uh, broken by mice. So uh, the mice attack as well. So I never played this game before. Now I don't have any instructions for this. Don't really know what I'm doing. It would be nice if there were instructions for this game. Specifically these prototypes. Because I don't really know what I'm doing here unless I look online. You know, I'm trying different button combinations. I think you can climb up the pipes. That's really all I figured out. So um, it would be nice to have instructions for these games we've never played before. Um, just simply because we've never played them, right? A lot of us haven't. So that's one of my complaints about the Game Station Pro is there are no instructions on the screen. Um, like Atari 50 had all the instructions, right? Um, it would just be helpful to have that. I, I know they probably didn't have the space, time, or money to do that, but it would have been nice. So moving on, we have Meebzork. This is a prototype where you're a warrior named Meebzork who can practice or play through six different levels, not including another level that was going to be after the one you finish. So, so this is a prototype, and um, again, uh, here's a game demo and an option. Um, graphics are really nice for the 5200. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, again, no instructions. I'm just shooting. I didn't really know what I was doing until I got it involved in it, but um, it's a fun game. Um, again, I just wish there were instructions or on-screen instructions for this. 
cool to have these prototypes on here that I've never heard of before and never played. I mean, pretty darn cool. And it, and it makes owning this console um, a little more feasible for collectors like myself. Of course I'm going to want this. But it's got games that I've never played before, so that's also a plus. And it's got an SD card slot that you can sideload games on. So, uh, moving on here. Millipede is one of my favorite 5200 games, um, so let's go ahead and play that. Now, my favorite, of course, is the 2600 version because it's faster. But uh, this version is more colorful, for sure. Uh, but yeah, just such a classic game. I'm glad that both versions are on here, um, actually. And the, and the arcade version, I believe, so I think we have three versions. I could be wrong, but... I'll be showing a game list at the end, showing all the games, so you can prove me wrong right there. <laughs> it's hard to remember while I'm filming, but uh, just such a fun game. Again, Centipede was a game I remember in 82, there was a line out the door for her, and it, I think it had been out, and uh, just such a classic game. So, basketball, bowling, Aquaventure. This is an awesome unreleased game. I actually have the Atari XP cart for this game. It is amazing, you guys. This is It's one of those games where, where you just think, this is a shame this never officially came out. It's so well made. It's pretty. It's got great music. I mean, it's a full, complete game. And it's amazing. It's actually one of my favorite Atari 2600 games right now. Um, I've been playing the XP card a lot. And now you can play it here on the Game Station Pro and save your scores. So pretty cool. And the mermaid takes you home. Love it. So moving on here, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Millipede. Here is the uh, Atari 2600 version that came out in 84. This is my favorite. Um, it is less graphically pleasing as the 5200 version, but I, th I think it just moves faster in general, and I think it's more fun. This is the version I had as a kid, and this is the version that I'm used to. Um, I actually prefer this over the arcade version as well. So um, it's just fun to me. It's faster. You know, you still got the the uh, loud noises in this one, which I prefer over the 5200 version. It's just a little more arcade-like to me, um, so I really enjoy it. Another game I could play for hours. Let me know down below what your favorite Atari 2600 game was. I would love to hear it. Alright, moving on here. Let's go ahead and go back out to the gallery and see what we got. So here's the original Night Driver. We have Off the Wall, which is a favorite as well. Moto Rodeo, uh, 1990. Uh... This is a fun game that came out later for the system. Kind of reminds me of Excite Bike or something a little bit. But in this one, you can do wheelies, and it's fun. So um, definitely basic graphics. Um, once you get the hang, though, of the controls, I've seen a friend play this, and I was just busy. He was running through it so fast. So once you get the hang of it, you do get to go faster, and it's a little more fun. Um, right now, I'm just kind of winging it. <laughs> but uh, it's it's actually a game I got uh, complete in box for pretty cheap on eBay when I first started collecting. I think I got it for like 20 bucks, complete in box. And i um, glad I got it. It's got some cool cover art. But yeah, um, as a kid, I remember going to Monster Truck Rallies in the mid-80s, specifically at Irving Stadium in Irving, Texas, which was the former Cowboy Stadium, no longer there. Dallas Cowboys, but um, yeah, I saw many a Monster Truck rally there for my birthday. So Roadrunner is a game I love, and here it is, from 1989. So of course you're the Roadrunner, um, running from Wile E. Coyote. Uh, this is such a fun game. Um, I know at the time this was on several platforms. I'm glad it was on Atari 2600. I never knew it was until I saw, I think it was a video from Classic Game Room. Um, or no swear gamer on YouTube, and I just fell in love with it. It's so much fun. So you can uh, you you can circle back in front of a car that's approaching, and it'll kill the coyote. Uh, there are also later levels where you're jumping over pits and maybe even lava. Um, I can't remember right now, but um, just a, such a fun game with a lot of character, and um, I, I like the little meat meeps that are inserted throughout. Um, fun game. <laughs> I could go on forever. So 
So back out in the arcade here, let's take a look and see what we got. So Save Mary, this is a game that's going to be released on Atari XP as well that I pre-ordered. It was never released officially in a cartridge. And now I don't exactly know how to play this game, so don't laugh at me. But um, I'm glad it's here. I'm just kind of showing you a little bit of what it, what it looks like. It's a pretty basic game. Um, I'm going to have to read up on the instructions because I don't know how to grab these little things to make a bridge. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, this is what that game is going to look like when it comes out. So just FYI. Um. <laughs> ah, how do you get it? I don't know. We need instructions. Is that Mary or Bruce? I can't tell. Looks a little bit like, like Bruce to me, my coworker. <laughs> All right. So moving on here. Let's go back out to the arcade. We got Secret Quest. This came out in 89, I think by Axelon, uh, who did Off the Wall as well. Now, this is an awesome game. I remember on the back of the game box, there was a picture of, no of Nolan Bushnell, and apparently he had helped out with this game, I think is what it said. Um, I can't recall, and I th I'm not sure if that's correct. But you're supposed to enter your name there, and I just kind of went through it. But this is probably the game that's most like Legend of Zelda for the 2600. Again, this came out later, toward the end of its life, um, in the late 80s. And it's a lot of fun. I've actually gotten pretty far in this game, aside from playing it here. Um, there's, there's a lot of depth to the game, many levels. You have to uh, sometimes find hidden doors and go in certain rooms in certain orders. So it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. If you like Legend of Zelda, you'll love Secret Quest. As a game that came out later and it didn't get a lot of love at the time because the place of Hunter was on the way out when this came out. But if they had more games like this, maybe a year before or after the crash, I think it would have helped for sure. Um, but, but Axelon made some cool stuff for sure. Check out Secret Quest if you have not. It's such a fun game. So after this, I'm going to take a look at the bonus games on the Game Station Pro. Um, the bonus games are a mix of Pico Interactive games, NES games, and Genesis games from my understanding, and probably some homebrews. So I'm um, going to go ahead and uh, click the B button on the control stick to go back out. And you can hit the uh, home button as well on the joystick. So let's go down to bonus games and take a look at these. So we got Eight Eyes, which is an awesome game, Bad Street Brawler. Some of these games are arcade, as I said. Some of them are from Pico. I, I have some of these on my Evercade, actually, in the Pico carts. So I'm just going to play a few of these. Now, there are some games in here I liked that I did not think I would like. Now, I've, I haven't played them all. I played a lot of them, um, or, or at least looked at them. But, um, yeah, a lot of these games I've also seen on other of my arcade devices, you know, you know that have all of these types of games on them, right? Um, the handhelds, the cheaper handhelds. So there's a game in here that I fell in love with I didn't think I would, and that's Lawnmower. Now, I never played this game before, but it's actually kind of fun. Um, it kind of reminds me of Hover Buffer as well by, um, um, by Llamasoft. Oh, Jeff Mentor, couldn't remember his name. <laughs> but um, this game's kind of similar to that to me in a way. It's, uh, you know, it involves cutting grass, but um, it's fun. You have to grab the fuel before time runs out, and, and you could uh, speed towards it, and it does not use it more fuel, which I love. So it's just a re little relaxing game to play. Um, I actually, like I said, find myself playing this again and again and enjoying it. Um, later on in levels, there are obstacles like rocks, and if you go over flower beds, you lose fuel. Um, so... Uh, just a really fun game so far that I found, and I'm sure there's others on here too. Uh, there's a game I'll play after a while, um, as well involving sumo wrestling, which is funny, and sushi. <laughs> but this is such a fun game, and I'm glad it's on here. Um, I'm not sure, I didn't see the main menu, or I can't remember, but um, I think this might be a Pika game, I can't remember. But a lot of fun. Here are the flower beds I was talking about. If you go over those, I think you lose fuel. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. I, I played this, um, I want to say, 
about 30 minutes yesterday, probably longer than I should, but um, I got pretty far. I got to like level 7 or so. There are a lot of other obstacles that come into play, and uh, it gets a lot more tricky for sure. Just make sure that you're kind of not too far from the center of the screen. That's kind of my tip for this game, because uh, the further you have to go, go to get the fuel, the worse, right? So it's kind of interesting too. Some of these games I have on my iArcade because the iArcade has some Pico games on it. Um, but really interesting. So here's the Lawn 3. I'm just going to go over a rock and show you what it does. See it traps up your mower and you're out of fuel. But um, just such a fun game. Really fun, simple game. So going back out to the main screen, to the arcade, we have Mermaids of Atlantis. This is kind of like a Tetris-like game. Uh, and I was not that good at it, but I didn't spend too much time with it. <laughs> Maybe all of five minutes. But uh, it's cool to have these different extra games here as well. At first, I was a little miffed that, that they all just weren't Atari games. But I think it's kind of fun to have other games on here too. Just to give a variety to the console. So, you, so you're not just like, okay, I'm just going to play Atari. You can come on here and play any of these other bonus games, which are actually, a lot of them are Pico games from Pico Interactive. So Sumo Slam is another game I found myself drawn to. This is a 16-bit game on here. And see, there's Pico Interactive screen and Sega Man as well. Um, so this is a fun game. Uh, you can choose from different items. I chose Sushi. But um, really neat. Um, it's pretty simple. Basically, you're just... The sumo wrestler is constantly moving around in a circle, and every time you touch the controller, he goes the other way. Um, so you're just basically gobbling up the sushi here. You can fall off of this little wafer or raft, and I've, I, I've done that. I did not include that here, but you can. <laughs> but just a fun little game. There are also uh, um, like action strategy games, RPG games on here. Uh, shooter, so definitely check out all the games. I'm not going to play more than just a few of them, but there are some cool games on here. Eight Eyes is a really cool game. I just love that one. Here's Switchblade, for instance, a uh, 16-bit game. Now, I think Switchblade 2 is on the Atari Lynx, um, if it's the same series, but uh, I'm not that good at it, but here it is. I just want to show you a little bit of it, of the gameplay so you can see. I think that's the Sega Man logo down there. Uh, and yeah, kind of a cool game. Um, as you see, I don't really know what I'm doing uh, since there's really no control mechanism to show you to start this out with, like the Atari games. That's another complaint. Um, I wish that there were a little more about these games on these screens. Um, for instance, how you move the controller or, you know, just what the game's about. That'd be nice, right? So here's Thunderbolt. I found myself drawn to this game. This is a fun shooter, kind of the style of Gradius or something, uh, but a lot of fun. I like the graphics. Of course, my favorite game in this style is probably Zorlor Mercenary on the Atari Lynx handheld, as far as Atari stuff goes. Um, this is not Atari, however, but it's a lot of fun. Of course, I could play this all day. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what this looks like. Really cool. So we also have games like Zany Golf, which is another 16-bit game. Um, I, I think some of these games are, like I said, on my other My Arcade handhelds. I have a few of them. Um, a lot of them just have like a hundred of these types of games from Pico and Sega and Nintendo, you know, on those consoles and other random companies, but um, interesting. Some of the games can actually be fun, and some of them can be NES games or clones of games. I'm not that good at this game. Uh, 
it does tell you how to play, but for time's sake, I'm just going to kind of speed through this. But uh, I just wanted to show you what kind of other games are on here. It's like Putt-Putt. So yeah, interesting. Um, so there are a ton of games on here to check out for sure. I'm sure you'll find something in here you like. Zooming Secretary is a game that says came out in 2011. Um, so this is another one of these little homebrew games that are on here. Um, this is an interesting game. Uh, definitely 8-bit in style. You have to answer these phones. And um, it says like Macbeth, Macbeth was a king in Scotland. And, and then there is some other history that you'll hear about in these phone calls. I'm not sure what this has to do with the game, but it's kind of an interesting concept for sure. Kind of like Diner Dash in a way. You're trying to satisfy every little need there is. And in later levels, like on day two, your boss comes in and is barking around on his phone. And uh, there are different things to do in here, like check the phone and file stuff. And it's really interesting. Here's a coffee machine. Of course, that's what I'm drawn to. But uh, interesting game for sure. Again, I don't know a lot about this one. I don't even really know what I'm doing. I wish there were instructions here for this stuff. Oops, I got fired. Aw, oh, sad. But I got hired again. <laughs> Interesting game. So coming back out here and looking, here's Diver Boy and Cheese Chase. These are games I have on my iRcade as well. I love Diver Boy. This is also an Evercade cart um, for the Pico collection, I believe. So much fun. Um, I love Diver Boy. I don't think this is the arcade version. I think this is for a console because the graphics look a little off to me. Um, it doesn't look as good as the arcade version, so I'm pretty sure it's for a console for the Genesis or NES. But um, just a fun game. I enjoy it. Basically, you're getting these little opening up these clams and shells here and then you have to dive down and get the stuff that drops out before it disappears um, you could also become a boat net a shooting boat and I noticed on this version it doesn't make a sound when you shoot so I'm pretty sure this is a home console version of this game you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about oh I missed the D crap so you can grab bonus letters too to reveal certain items I'm glad it's here though I know this isn't the arcade version, but I'm glad it's here. It's a really cool game. Again, I could play this all day. I love me some Diver Boy. Okay, here's Cheese Chase. This is a really interesting, uh, weird game. This is on my iRcade as well. Um, I think this might be a Pico Interactive. I'm not sure. Let's see if the front screen will tell us anything. Oh, it's art and magic. That's right. Yes, I do have this on my arcade. I remember. But uh, it's an interesting game. It came out in 94. I'm not sure what console this was for. If it was for Genesis or um, if it's an arcade game. I'm not sure. I'm sure some of you out there know. But basically, you're running around. Um, there are little turnstile like doors to go through. You collect the cheeses. You avoid the enemies. You avoid the lava. <laughs> Crap. Oh, I couldn't get up. Oh, man. <laughs> Looks kind of like Chuck E. Cheese graphics, right? Just a really quirky game. I'm glad it's here though. It shows some variety. And again, I'm, I am actually glad there's bonus games on here. Again, another reason to play. So Fancy World is a game that's kind of like Snow Bros to me a little bit. Um, it, might, it may have been a ripoff, I don't know, or who ripped off who. But this is 96 Unico Electronics. Again, I'm not sure which console this was for, um, or if this is the arcade version. Um, but a lot of fun. Um, basically, again, as I said, it's kind of a Snow Bros type game. Um, you're just kind of attacking opponents and getting power-ups and kind of like bubble bobble a little bit or whatever. Um, but a really fun game. I enjoy this. This is also on my, on my, uh, iArcade as well. 
<laughs> Such a quirky, fun little game. I'm glad they're here. So looking back out here at the main menu, I um, just want to show you a little bit um, these bonus games here. Really fun. Um, and there's a lot to explore here with 200 plus games. Uh, you know, even Boat Duel is fun. Little Lancelot is fun. Galaxy Gunners. Uh, Free Fall. Um, Mighty Warriors. Lucky Boom. Maniac Square. That's on my eye arcade as well. Radical Rex. Pyramids of Ra. Power Punch 2. Uh, Snocky, Snowboard Championship, Steel Force, Street Racer, The Humans, uh, which is uh, a uh, Lemmings type game. Uh, really fun. So there's lots of stuff here. There's even a Thunderbolt 2, uh, World Rally, Water Margin, Treasure Master, Top Racer 2, The Immortal. Um, just a lot of fun. Here's my recents menu, just to show you what I played. Uh, I did play a little bit of Motor City Patrol, but I sucked at it, so I didn't include it here. So, um, just all kinds of fun here, you guys. I definitely think that there will be something on here for everyone to enjoy, from the classic Atari video game fan to maybe um, new kids just wanting to explore the old titles. I think this is a great solution, especially with the SD card slot for game saves and to sideload. ROMs as well. I think that's great. Um, Gen X Grown Up has a great video about that, and I'll be showing that on my channel too in the near future. So here's just some of the settings. You can scan this for updates. You can also uh, reset your console in there. All kinds of stuff. So I also wanted to say uh, there is a little split. There's a little screen saver as well when the when the machine goes to sleep. Um, it shows these images, which I love. And I, I love the music on this thing, too. The tracks are cool. So here's the complete games list, guys. Here you go. So as I'm showing you these games, guys, I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much for watching my review. I'm about to give you my score for the Atari Game Station Pro by my arcade. Definitely a lot of cool games on here. Um, again, I think there's something for everyone here. I love how the console is designed. The joysticks are a little plasticky, but I do like the unique design and LED lighting. I like the big LED lights of the system. I like the fact you can sideload games. Um, there's a lot to love about the system. Um, and lots of expandability, which I really enjoy. Let me know down below what you think. And here is my final take on the system. All right, guys, let me know what you think down below, what you think about the Atari Game Station Pro. I think it's a cool device. Um, everything considered, uh, with some of the issues I've had, uh, not very many issues, mind you, in a new product. Um, so, because of that, I'm going to give the Atari Game Station Pro a B plus. Um, I think there's a little bit of room for improvement, but I think overall it's a cool value for Atari fans, for vintage gaming fans. I think it's fun. It's laid out pretty nicely. The music and the menus are nice. Uh, the controllers are cool. Um, I just wish it was a little taller for our big hands, but um, cool device for sure. If you want something cheaper, definitely check out the uh, Atari Portable uh, Flashback. Uh, uh, from Ad Games, you can find those on eBay for like 20 bucks, and you can put an SD card in and play whatever you want, 2600 wise. So, uh, on this, however, you have a bigger library available, of course. So, uh, let me know down below what you think. Thank you so much for watching BCB. Uh, be a good person, get your Java, and go play some freaking Atari. We'll see you later, guys. Bye now.
You are, you are watching, watching Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.